Hey guys! Welcome to part 3 of the Complete Hair Type series on density. YouTube and Instagram are filled with images of naturals with remarkably dense hair. It's easy to see how someone can think that's what natural hair is supposed to look like. But the true image of beauty is infinite because everyone comes in all different shapes and sizes. That's one of the reasons why I love natural hair so much because it forces you to focus on you and find your unique style and presence. It's like therapy. In the last video, we went over how to test, change, and enhance your curl pattern and texture. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to test and increase your hair's density. Your hair density is a measure of how many individual hair strands you have on your head. People with dense hair have a high number of hair strands and their scalp is barely visible. Sparse refers to people with a low number of hair strands. Their hair type tends to be scalpy when their hair is in twists or braids. It's impossible to count every hair strand on your head without sophisticated machines. So testing your hair density is more of an observation. Before testing my hair, I took extra efforts beforehand to condense my hair as much as possible so I can get a more accurate reading. It doesn't matter if your hair is stretched or shrunken, but for dense hair types, it'll probably be easier to do this on stretched hair. Use a firm hair tie to put your hair into a ponytail. It doesn't have to be super tight, just make sure it's secure. If your ponytail is larger than a quarter, your hair is on the dense side. If it's smaller than a quarter, it's on the sparse side. If it's the same size as a quarter, it's somewhere in the middle. As you can see, my ponytail is a lot larger than a quarter. How much larger and how much smaller your ponytail is from a quarter tells you how extreme your density is. Based on how much larger my ponytail is, if I had to be more exact, I would say I'm right around here, but if someone asked, I would just say dense. Some people have naturally sparse hair, but if your once dense hair became sparse, here are some possible culprits. Stress is real guys. If you have too much of it for a period of time, it can mess up everything in your body. Take a few minutes to really ask yourself if you're stressed you'll know if you think about it. If so, pick something relaxing to do at least three times a week that you can stick to. You can read a book, take a nap, do yoga, or run. It's up to you. I'm not a big fan of synthetic medication, but I also understand that some people are in the position where they need to take them. Check with your doctor if the medication you're on has any side effects that can affect the health of your hair or any other crazy side effects. If so, you can discuss a plan with your doctor to slowly wean off the meds, or if that's not an option, create a lifestyle change that will help offset the side effects. I'm also not a big fan of harsh synthetic hair products. The chemicals in relaxers, texturizers, and hair dyes can inflict major damage to your hair and scalp and make your once dense hair sparse. This image is of someone doing a Brazilian keratin treatment. This treatment releases a ton of formaldehyde in the air, hence why they have gas mask on. Even though your hair may look nice for a while, if it's harmful to your skin and body, then it's harmful to your hair. A hair regimen that's consistent and a whole lot of TLC can help offset the negative effects of these chemicals but they will eventually cause severe irreversible damage. If you use harsh chemicals and you're concerned about your hair getting more and more sparse, it's best to stop using them and build a recovery plan. Below are links to videos that goes over the science behind these chemicals. If you're gonna use them, it's best not to use them blindly. The appearance of your hair, skin, and nails says a lot about what's going on inside your body. If you're young and notice your hair is excessively thinning out with no explanation, it's time to go to a doctor. You may want to get checked up for any type of autoimmune disorder, 
like lupus, alopecia areata, Hashimoto's disease, Graves' disease, Crohn's disease, and psoriasis. Your body may be in a state where it's attacking itself for some reason. Extreme hair loss is often a symptom of that. Dense, textured hair has zero tolerance for tension. It hates it. The denser your hair is, the more it hates tension. My hair is pretty dense. That's one of the reasons why I blow it out once a month. And skip one inch or so of my roots when my hair is in twists. I go out of my way to avoid any tension on my roots. Tension is an easy thing to avoid because you can feel and sometimes see it. What you're feeling and seeing are your hair follicles under major stress. Don't ignore it and wait for it to pass because excessive or long-term tension can kill off actual hair follicles, in some cases permanently. Below is a link to a two-part series on how to restore thinning edges based on what stage you're in. Excessive breakage ties into a lot of the other culprits. The simplest things can cause breakage. It's just how our hair is. It really just wants to be left alone most of the time. It's a balancing act between keeping your scalp clean, your hair flexible and lubricated, and leaving your hair alone. As mentioned earlier, some people have naturally sparse hair. Did you know there's a whole tribe in South Africa called the Sands Tribe with naturally beautiful sparse hair? So natural hair is more about personal style than trying to fit into a box. It's the definition of unique. But if you have dense hair that's becoming sparse, here's some tips on what to do. Herbs and roots are powerful medicines. I dry them, drink them, eat them, inhale them, and use them in my hair. They're a big part of my life. And for multiple reasons, they work really well at stimulating your scalp and feeding and repairing your hair follicles. I'm really excited to share their proven properties and preparation methods with you in the next series. And the good news is that you don't have to have acres of land to grow them yourself. They can easily be grown indoors, in an apartment or in the dorms. Apart from your scalp, preserving the structure and strength of your hair strands is also very important in increasing overall density. Protein treatments like the Real Protein Treatment or rice water helps to strengthen your hair strands so they can be more resistant to breakage. They help your cuticles stay intact and not strip off easily. Assuming you're in good health, a consistent hair regimen and being super gentle with your hair when you're handling it should start to help your hair bulk up. In the next video, we're gonna talk about thickness, what it means, and how to increase it. I hope this video was helpful. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.